My mom and brother came to Taiwan to attend our wedding. I'm from Russia and my wife is from Taiwan, especially from like Amizu tribe. So we are completely different people. We have different experiences, we have different backgrounds, of different course. cultural. We argued every day about everything. We just stop in the middle of the street, started shouting. My brother had uh, an argument with uh, like uh, Lao Agon and oh. his first day in Taiwan because he doesn't know you cannot cross the road in Taiwan. Oh. He was almost hit by this Agon. I didn't teach him, this is my yeah, fault. Yeah. Cole Fogel here, feeling like I am uh, I came from some sort of tiny world to a giant, the land of the giants over here. Ni hao, ni hao. Why? It's easy to remember, mm. but mostly because when I came to Taiwan, yeah, many Taiwan people would me. They would say, "Hey, your hair is like a very long." Because it was like a curly, and they would say, "Ha ha ha ha!" Why? It's like Ian. I've been living in Taiwan for five years. Yeah, this is my second time in Kaohsiung. I oh. came here several years ago for some business purposes, so I didn't see any attractions. Yeah, I didn't try any famous. Food. I don't know anything about Kaohsiung. Yeah. And I came here to your area. This is quite far from the city. It, yeah, this is old school yeah, the, Kaohsiung. This is amazing. We just crossed the like a pineapple field. Yeah. This is amazing. First thing I wanted to ask you was your mother came to visit? Oh yeah, my mom and brother came to Taiwan. Oh, your mom and your brother, okay. Yeah, both of them came to Taiwan to attend our wedding. Tell me about the wedding. My wife is Ami Zhu. Yeah. And I'm Russian. Originally I said, you know, if you want to arrange a wedding, yeah. what if you just go to Hualien? Yeah. If you go to the tribe and we do it like a traditional indigenous way. But it was so complicated to arrange because, you know, not, uh, not a lot of people would go that far to Hualien, you know. So eventually we, we decided to arrange it in Taipei. It would be easier for everyone. It was not easy at all because we had more than 300 guests and my wife actually spent so much time arranging it because there are a lot of different un like uncles, some brothers, mom's relatives, dad relatives yes. and you need to know how to sit all of them together. And my wife tried to explain me, she asked yeah. me to help her and I said, baby, I have no idea of what it means. I don't know anything, don't ask me. Yeah. And eventually we argued a little bit but then she just arranged everything by herself because this is so complicated. How, how long was she planning the wedding for? We started planning yeah. it uh, one year before wow. the date. Did you feel like that was like not necessary or did you think it was necessary, like for, from, from your perspective? From my perspective, yeah. I wouldn't do this because you know, mostly for men, it is not that uh, important. Right, I agree. And also yeah. women like to pay uh, attention to some tiny to finer details. details. So she was asking me like, oh, what about this ribbon or what about this? Say, Baby, like both Did you get into fights because you didn't look like you cared that much sometimes? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking we about. We would argue a lot, we would argue a lot because to me, yeah. most of the things are more or less the same, but to them it's really important. What's the most important thing about a, a, a marriage? Uh, and from your opinion? Understanding. I'm from Russia and my wife is from Taiwan, especially from like Amizu tribe. Mm. So we are completely different people. We have different experiences, mm. we have different backgrounds, of different course. cultural, you know, like things, different understanding. Mm. We, we do a lot of things differently, we think differently, but the thing is you need to understand the person and just accept just the differences. And accept it, yeah. <laughs> you cannot change a person, right? You no. cannot change this person's habits. You need to be really yeah. smart, you know, really. like you need to be really understanding, to be open-minded, you know, because you have different cultures, so you yeah. have a lot of things to explore. You have a lot of things to learn about yeah. each other. So this is amazing. But, but part of it is going to be arguing sometimes. Of course, you know? yeah. But now we don't argue much, I think. When I just came to Taiwan, we argued almost every yeah, day. We argued say. every day about everything. We just stop in the middle of the street, started shouting, ah, you don't understand me, you don't understand me. But yeah, but now we kind of figure things we out. We are on the same... Are you planning on having children at some point? Yeah, yeah, we do. So yeah. wait till that comes and then you'll have new things to argue about. Maybe, maybe. Because that's <laughs> that's when her childhood programming comes out oh, yeah. and your childhood programming comes out and those might have conflict yeah. that you can obviously work through, but that's that's when you get to know another layer on the uh, of the onion, if, if you know what I'm yeah, saying. Like, again, two big worlds collapsing. Yeah. <laughs> what was the best 
part of the whole wedding? The best part of it was uh, her indigenous relatives' performance. Oh, cool. You know, they dance in a circle. Yeah, they kind yeah, of yeah. hold each other's hands, they sing. And because the venue was quite huge, yeah. they did the same. We made a, like a huge circle. Oh, cool, you got everyone. A lot of people were wearing this indigenous yeah, uh, yeah, tribe yeah. clothes, really beautiful red clothes with like bags and everything. Did you get your Russian friends to join? Russian like... friends did the same. They taught them how to dance. They taught my mom how to dance. Ah. Actually, some of my friends who came from Russia, they legitimately cried. They, like, they were watching indigenous people dancing because, you know, yeah. Their dancing is also special, it kind of raises emotions. And so guys like I started crying and said, wow, this is like amazing. We've never experienced this, this, this before. It really was cool really interesting. that they got emotional about it. Yeah. All right, so your mom and your brother came. Tell me about what was their experience with Taiwan? They, they loved it. Their very first day in Taiwan, they arrived to Taoyuan Airport and uh, we drove them back to Taipei. And when they came out of the airport, my brother said, whoa, so hot. Like, because you know, when you, <laughs> when you go out of the airport, this heat wave just, just like, yeah. like it hits you in the face. And he said, wow, guys, how do you live here? And the very next day, we took them to Hualien Ooh, to participate beautiful. in Harvest Festival, Indigenous Harvest Festival. Ah. Cool. So after playing, they didn't have time to rest. So I took them everywhere. They were so exhausted, but uh, they didn't have choice because I mean, it's yeah, like no, I understand. First, first time in Taiwan. And my mom, she loves swimming. Oh, and and okay. she loves like palms. She loves all these like uh, tropic looking like things. Yeah. Coming from Canada, I always dreamed of living somewhere with palm trees. Yeah, you like, because you see this. It's different. You see this in movies. Tropical. On TV. Yeah. She wants to swim all the time. But the thing is, it's uh, there are not so many places in Taiwan you can swim. Yeah, there are certain areas of Hualien or right? they don't want you to swim. Actually, most, like all of this area in Hualien, there are mostly like rocks, so you cannot mm. swim there. But we would drive a car, say, stop, I want to swim. I say, mom, there are rocks. I say, you cannot swim there. It's not safe. There is yeah. no entrance into like a climb somewhere. Right, right, right. Any any foods that she tried where that she loved or or thought was like <laughs> disgusting? Oh man, I, I can get them to try everything. My brother, he is more like oh, open-minded oh, to, to, okay. to this kind of, you know, yeah. new food things. Y younger generation, yeah, I guess. But, but mom is more like conservative. But my brother is okay. I say, brother, you want to eat some, some like a spicy duck tongue? He said, yes. That's amazing that he was so outgoing about it. And honestly, saying, what's on like tree, like a duck tongue? I've I'm, tried it. I've never tried it. I've tried pretty much almost everything. Yeah, but, most. but he tried a lot of things. I have never tried. Although you think you've tried everything in Taiwan and there's always some weird thing around the corner. Yeah, they, they usually yeah, sell yeah. something interesting. There is yeah. always something new. But duck tongue is definitely up there as a weird one. Yeah, but he kind of likes to say, oh, it's a nice, like a crunchy. Well, I tried it once and that was enough. Yeah, I me. know, I know. I, I never tried it and I'm not going to. So in Russia, all of this nets and stuff, when yeah. you cook, yeah. you it's throw gone. this out. Yeah, they don't waste anything here. You throw this out in Russia. In Taiwan, you need to pay for this even more than you pay <laughs> for meat. It's funny. And my wife said, do you want yeah. to pay like 150 for, yeah. for, for this duck, some, some <laughs> beak? No. And say, baby, this, I wouldn't even eat this for free. Why do you need to pay for this? I, I'm, I'm pretty open-minded to most foods, but yeah. duck, duck head is just not one of the, I don't, I don't think I'll ever try yeah. it. But my brother was okay because he likes cooking and yeah. he likes like experimenting with all yeah, the things, flavors different and things. flavors, yeah. Was that your, the, your brother's first time here? His first time, What yeah. was that like? That must have been almost like unreal to you, right? It was, I thought it would be unreal. Before they came, I had a different thing. I had some, some, some thoughts that it's, it's just impossible to imagine. Imagine. You know, like yeah. a European looking like mom, yeah. tall mom, tall brother in this like a Taiwanese area. They yeah. wouldn't even fit here, you know, it's like a, yeah. they, 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 they don't belong here. But then they, they came there. They fit in. in they were so organic, you know, yeah. my mom was like also chill. She went for a walk. She went to talk to some local people. All right, so what, what was her, like, if you could, if you were to ask her, what do you think the highlight, obviously seeing her son and getting married, but yeah. putting the wedding aside and seeing you, what yeah. was the highlight of her vacation, do you think? The swimming? Liudao. We went to Green Island. Oh, okay, yeah. And also it was her first time she rode the scooter. Ah, uh, she drove one. 
She tried a little bit, but basically oh I my had God. to carry her. But it was her first time. I can't even picture my parents driving yeah. scooters. My mom is big. She's yeah. maybe 180 something. Tall. She's like a kind of big woman. Oh, big woman. Okay. Yeah. Strong Russian Strong woman. Strong Russian woman. Yeah. <laughs> and like people in Ludau were looking at, at me and my mom behind me oh on this God. tiny scooter like a... Hey, hi guys. My mom liked this Ludau trip the most because of the scooter, because uh, of the, the ocean. ocean. Yeah. Ludau, you can swim everywhere. Everything, the, yeah. the, this was perfect for my mom. I said, yeah, mom, go. Now you are free. So I, she I, had a true tropical holiday when she went there. Yeah, yeah. She loved it a lot. Uh, 11 p.m. We needed to go to sleep. And mom said, I want to go swimming. Oh my God. I said, mom, this is dark. Nobody She was having the time here. of her life, it sounds yeah. like. Will she have a chance to come back again? Yeah, yeah. She loved it a lot. She is it a is lot. your brother coming back again? For sure. Absolutely. Brother cool. loved it a lot too. But my brother had uh, an argument with uh, like uh, Lao Agong on oh. his first day in Taiwan because Don't mess with the Agongs He was almost hit by this Agong <laughs> because he doesn't know you cannot cross the road in Taiwan oh. you know even though You're, you, you this technically is green can, light, yeah. this green light you cannot do this I didn't teach him this is my yeah, fault yeah. So first. that's your fault you should have explained that yeah. before But I should have explained it yeah <laughs> this, this is my bad but it was a cool experience for them because you see it's different culture. So my brother's first day arguing with Lao Agon and eating a lot of, uh, you know, like a random food at the night market. Were you sad to see them go after they went? Yeah, it was actually very sad. Such a short time, three weeks. I mean, it's not that long, right? Yeah. And uh, for my mom, it was also hard to let me go live in Taiwan. And when I was living, uh, Russia, she was like crying a lot. She still sometimes, she, she phones me sometimes, she like cries. Aww, she says, oh, yeah, son. mama, of course. To me, the biggest uh, challenge living in Taiwan is to see my family members getting older. I know, it sucks. Because I saw yeah. my mom like uh, three years ago, she was a different person. Yeah. I see her now, she's different. And when I saw her, I was so happy, but you, you see, you see a lot of changes. It's a slightly in, different person. In, in, in yeah. their face, in yeah. their body yeah. shape. And it's like, it's really uh, hard, It's hard, it's you hard know? for me too, yeah. Yeah. But you need to choose because I have a family in Taiwan now and I, I have a family in Russia. So you cannot be in both places at the same time. I always say I wish I could literally like get a fish hook and bring Canada closer right? to yeah. Taiwan. It would be amazing. Oh. It would be amazing. So to yeah. me probably it was the biggest challenge to see them after three years. I, I totally get it. Because for me, like I didn't get home for a visit for like the pandemic and all that stuff happened and I didn't get home for like four years. Four years. My dad's 82, right? So he was 70 something when I last saw him. I yeah. mean, a lot, big change, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. It's really, uh, yeah, yeah, I wish for both of us we could see them every year and not have to wait like two yeah, or three years. This is true. I always, I always feel envy in a good, in mm. a good sense of this word. Yeah. When I see beautiful Taiwanese family spending yeah. time together. Yeah, and don't take it for granted. Yao Ai Shi. You know, family can be really annoying when they're around all the time, but believe me, it could be worse where they're not around Yeah. and you Absolutely. long to see them, you know? Well, brother, I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Yeah, and I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I will see you in the next one.